Okay, what if I told you you were wrong about a very, very basic aspect of the sun for most of your entire lives? I'm guessing most of you probably wouldn't believe me. I know some of you probably know this, but a surprisingly large amount of people have no idea what colour the sun actually is. And there's a very, very good reason for this. And if you don't know the colour of the sun, well then it's probably not even your fault. Uh, let me explain. When we actually look at the sun, head on, it's usually during a sunset or a sunrise. Now, why is this important? You may ask. Well, during a sunset and sunrise, the sun's light actually has to travel through a much thicker, a much larger amount of atmosphere, and a lot more scattering occurs. So, with more and more blue light being scattered, what you usually end up seeing is a very yellowish or even orange sort of sunset and uh, pinkish orange sunrise. And this effect on our atmosphere makes the sun itself look orange. And when you see the moon when it's close to the horizon, the moon also looks yellow. But obviously we know that the moon isn't yellow because we can look directly at it when it's high up in the sky. So then, what colour truly is the sun? Well, the colour of stars is based on their surface temperature. So our sun is around 5,000 to 6,000 degrees Celsius. And I drew a very, very professional chart for you guys. That's right, now bask your eyes on this uh, beautiful chart, definitely not made in MS Paint. Um, and uh, you might actually notice something. If you look at the names of the stars, you'll notice that their colours, their actual real life colours, don't really correspond with the uh, names of the stars. So if you look at the brown dwarf there, it actually looks red. And you'll notice this for every star. For every star category, the actual star colour seems to be a bit higher up than what the name suggests. For example, our sun, which is a G-type star. It's supposed to be yellow-white, and yet it's just bright white. And that is the colour of the sun. It's white. So since the actual colour of the sun is caused by its temperature, then we can 100% prove that the sun is white. And also, all you have to do is look up at the sun midday, or go into space and take a picture of the sun, and it'll be bright white. There's not a hint of yellow or orange or any of that. And the same will go for other stars. Uh, for example, Red dwarfs are actually very yellowy looking. Uh, an F-type star, which is supposed to be white, might actually have a little bit of a bluish tint to it. And now the temperature of a star has absolutely nothing to do with how big it is, or how long it'll live, it's just the surface temperature of the star. So, we can take a giant, uh, a super giant star like UI Scotty, and it's orange, or yellow even. And then we look at something much, much smaller, but much, much hotter, like uh, Sirius, for example. Uh, Sirius is a bluish sort of color, which means it's very hot, 10,000 degrees Kelvin upwards. But it's nowhere near as big as UI Scuddy or VY Canis Majoris, which are some of the biggest stars in our known universe. So then why is our sun called the Yellow Dwarf? Well, names in astronomy and even other sciences, they're usually quite stupid and sometimes don't even make any sense. And that's probably because these things were named way before we had enough data on them to know their real colours or how colours even work and how the colour spectrum works. So these names are just based off of whatever people thought back in the day, whatever colours people assign to stars, or chose just from simple observation, looking at the sun during a sunset, or as we know is not really going to give an accurate representation of the sun. And speaking of star size, main sequence stars like our sun, that are usually medium sized, they'll live around 10 billion years. A red dwarf star, which is a bit smaller, a bit cooler, will usually live or 80 billion years and upwards, so that means that no red dwarf stars have actually died yet in our universe. But larger stars that consume more fuel, they burn up much more quickly and 
their lifespans are usually just tens of millions of years, which is nothing. It's a blink of an eye. It's a bit like an overweight person versus a skinny person. One of them may be massive, but the massive ones usually burn themselves out faster. <laughs> okay, that was a pretty shit analogy, but y you get the point. So yeah, that's why the sun isn't orange, or yellow, or even red. And I guess this should have been pretty obvious, even without seeing the sun from space. One of the biggest pieces of evidence for the sun's colour being white is uh, if you look at a rainbow. It's basically white light split up into all of the different colours in the colour spectrum, in the visible light spectrum. All of the colours of a rainbow combine to make white light. So that should have been a pretty big clue that the sun isn't orange or yellow as rainbows would be very, very different things. Also, if you look at snow, snow is transparent by default, but because it reflects the sun's light, it looks white. So there's another clue that the sun isn't orange. Okay, and that should conclude our video. I'd recommend subscribing. Uh, you better subscribe. And yeah, uh, hope you enjoyed, and if I made any mistakes, don't forget to correct me in the comments. Because I do read comments. Subscribe.